Okie dokie. Well, uh, this is Kurt Frankenberg with RadioactiveTrading.com, and I'm joined by my good friend Mike Chepka. How's it going, Mike? Oh, things are going okay today, Kurt. Uh, you know, just watching uh, the market's reaction intently to what's going on in Europe, of course, things that we cannot control, things beyond our control, and how the market's going to uh, switch us around on that. And, uh, of course, oh. we're going to talk today about... Uh, how we can negate some of those outside influences on the market, you know, and we talked several times before about how we can have strong companies and we can do our research and analysis, find companies with good management and good earnings and uh, say that this company looks like it's a good growth stock over time, but when we're in the short term, there's uh, 15, 20-day movements, maybe even 30-day movements, have a strong company, but watch it go down in price and uh, Maybe depending on the position we select, we end up not being in a good position, even though, you know, overall the stock was a strong stock and a stable stock, but the market dictated to us what's going to happen, not necessarily the performance of the stock itself. That's right. In, uh, gosh, in 2008, uh, for example, uh, Apple went from around $200 a share to uh, less than $100 a share. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it was a great company. <laughs> But the market uh, was not doing so well, the market at large. So, Mike, rather than uh, focus on what we can't control, we can't control what's going on overseas, we can't control uh, the Fed, we can't control earnings announcements, we can't control a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But there is something that we can control and uh, at exercise absolute control over. And uh, my, my uh, thought is that uh, whatever you can do, you should. <laughs> <laughs> Make sense? <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, the market is rampant chaos, and the only order that it has is the order that we bring to it. So uh, so with that thought, Mike, I, I thought I would talk about some radioactive trading principles. And then, uh, as promised in our email today, uh, going to uh, talk about the cover call strategy and, uh, importantly, more importantly, contrast it with uh, something that works a lot better long term. Mm -hmm. So, uh, real quick, let's let's review some radioactive trading principles. The first radioactive trading principle is fist, and that means uh, force ideal size trades. And it goes along with my uh, catchy saying: "Don't pick stocks, pick stops." And we actually we had a copycat oh, about four or five years ago uh, grab this saying and and uh, popularize it on his blog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but actually, yeah, I I, I did uh, start this one, and uh, and that fellow uh, for whatever reason his his website just disappeared, and and I don't know why, uh, but uh, but he stopped all of a sudden. So anyway, don't pick stocks. I like to say pick stops. Mm -hmm. Again, we're exercising the only control uh, that we can over the market when we pick the point at which we're going to get out, but we don't do it with the stop order. Uh, we will explain here in, in a moment what we do. do. We're going to also talk about uh, this other uh, two important principles, the ATM bell curve and the red line. And these two principles, okay, these two foundational principles of radioactive trading will uh, tell you exactly where to buy and where to sell time. Mm. And again, uh, another catchy saying, I like to say, don't time trades trade time. So, uh, you know, in the email we talked about, uh, geez, you know, what's more important, fundamental analysis or technical analysis? And my thinking is neither, neither one, because we cannot predict the future, okay? Mm -hmm. Whether it's uh, chart indicators, uh, you know, the, the technical analysis, uh, uh, whether it's a black box or something that you came up with, um, it, it's still impossible to completely know the future. And uh, it's also not necessarily going to guarantee you a gain if you pick a good company. A right. Quote unquote, good company might make money for itself, but it may not make money for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, uh, Mike, uh, my very first radioactive trade was done in 2002, uh, and I began blogging back then. And it was uh, with Amazon, but uh, instead of trading covered calls like I had been trained to do. What I decided to do is do everything backwards. Instead of selling a front month call, I bought a far out in time put option. Instead of uh, buying, I'm sorry, instead of selling that call slightly out of the money, mm -hmm. I bought the put slightly in the money. And uh, instead of using margin, I said, no, 
<laughs> I'm not going to use margin. So basically everything that combined to get me into trouble with cover calls trading that my uh, options trading guru had taught me to do, I just did everything backwards. And this is how that turned out. I was able to pick up Amazon there on the far left, the very far left here is Amazon at $16.09. Mm -hmm. And here 13 months later, it's trading at roughly four times that amount. But uh, uh, you know my my uh, put option still had a year left, more than a year left before expiration, and that that was kind of cool. Uh, it, it sort of indicated that uh, the idea that doing everything backwards from cover calls trading was really the way to uh, to move forward. Okay. Right. All right. So let's talk, let's talk about these three principles. Okay. First, the uh, uh, fist, okay, forcing an ideal size trade. You can uh, trade a position, Mike, that is too big, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get yourself in trouble. You know, you put all your eggs in one basket, well, uh, ouch, you, know, you can get hurt. But it's also possible to trade a position that's too small, you know, put too little at risk. For example, if I was to go brag to my wife, Sabrina, and say, uh, honey, I I just made a hundred percent return on one of my trades. Mm -hmm. What do you think the next question, the next thing out of her mouth is going to be? Well, how much did you invest? <laughs> That's right. If I say, well, just ten dollars, <laughs> it's like, well, great, good for you. So what? You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so what? You, you barely covered your transaction costs. Okay. On the other hand, uh, if I lose, you know, if I was to say to my wife, "Hey, I, I lost five thousand dollars," do you think she might hit the roof? Absolutely. That might be pretty exciting. If, well, if. yeah. <laughs> if if five thousand dollars is all I was trading, right? But if but if it was part of, uh, uh, gosh, a million dollar transaction, well, you know, losing five thousand dollars is kind of like the cost of doing business. It, it's you know less than it's a, it's about a half of one percent. Mm-hmm. Okay, so size matters, all right, and uh, depending on what size your account is, you're going to want to size your trades accordingly. Now, there's a tired old argument out there, Mike, that uh, uh, some folks will say, well, geez, uh, buying a married put, like like you do, Kurt, is identical to buying a long call. It's identical, but the long call is better. Now, uh, Mike? <laughs> mm -hmm. you're, you're familiar with the usage of the word identical, right? Of course. Okay, can something be identical but better? Not really, by definition. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Uh, but what, fo what folks are looking at is the risk-reward graph. They're looking at the risk-reward graph and they're saying, okay, that's the same angle, but they're not identical. No, not by a long stretch. Okay. For example, if you ordered a married put, Mike, if if you uh, put in the capital to order a married married put, and then you looked at your statement from your broker and uh, what you had instead of the married put, you know they went ahead and took your money. But instead of a married put, what you are left with instead is a long call. Uh, would you be happy with this? No, not at all. You know, I I specifically uh -huh. put in an order that I wanted to know that I had this much invested, I had this much at risk, and I wanted to be in the stock for a particular reason. That's the position I wanted. If they filled me with a different position and came back and said, oh, it has the same risk-reward graph, I'd say, well, but it's not the same position. This is the order I placed. You didn't fulfill your commitment to me and place the right order. Right. The parity trade of a married put is not a long call. Mm -hmm. It is a long call plus all the capital that you would normally put into purchasing the stock and setting that aside and putting it in an interest bearing account. That's what it really is. Okay? And a lot of folks overlook that. Um, the the, the, uh, the risk reward graph, sure, that looks very similar. Okay? But for example, if you're to pick up 100 shares of Walmart plus a put option, this is a dated presentation, okay? but I'm using this as an example. If you're to pick up Walmart uh, plus a put option and your total invested amount equaled $51.50, mm -hmm. your $50 put guarantees a uh, $50 return, okay, or, or not return, but a level of uh, uh, at which you can get stopped out or you can stop yourself out, okay? So 
the total at risk is the difference, the difference between what you invest and what's guaranteed by the put. Okay, and that dollar uh, fifty there, uh, compared to the fifty one fifty, is a very tiny at risk amount. On the other hand, if you're to pick up the fifty dollar calls, you're going to pay just a little bit more premium than you would risk with a um, married put. Okay, and what you may look at is, well, geez, you know, it only costs a dollar and sixty cents. Mm -hmm. You know, versus fifty one fifty, I could buy thirty times as many calls. Well, okay. <laughs> if you buy thirty t times as many calls, Mike, uh, you have thirty times as much at risk, correct? That would be right. Yes. Right. Okay. So we've got to understand that leverage is a two edged sword. And here in a moment, we're going to take a look at the trade simulator tool, and the trade simulator tool is going to reveal to us the fact, not the not the conjecture, not the theory, but the fact that if we keep our losses down into single digit amounts, we can actually be wrong more often than we're right and still make money. Mm -hmm. But if we fail to keep our risk down into single digit amounts, uh, it doesn't take, gosh, it doesn't take a very big loss uh, to, to, to reverse a lot of your wins. Okay, Not very cool. All right, so uh, forcing an ideal size trade, okay, forces you to risk less, to risk an ideal amount. And the radioactive profit machine is designed to keep you from risking too much. Uh, we're going to uh, show trade simulator tool here in just a moment. But I want to talk about a gentleman that came over from uh, a uh, another camp, okay, where they teach about cover calls and they teach Mike. Uh, that uh, that you can make three to six percent per month every month reliably, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of market direction. And they also uh, say that man, if if you really want to do well, come to our higher price seminar and we'll show you how to buy and sell calls against calls. Well, I had a fellow from this camp come over and uh, talk to me. He bought into Boston Scientific, bought an in the money call, like mm -hmm. what they said. Uh, I should I should say he bought 35 in the money calls. <laughs> right. It was their pick. You know, their their pick was Boston Scientific. It was their price. You know, they said get the 1250s. You know, because Boston Scientific is over 14 dollars. Get the 1250s and uh, sell calls against. Well, uh, he lost almost all of his investment. You know, about this point right here. Uh, this gentleman, I'll just refer to him by his initials, okay, DD. DD called me at this point and says, what should I do? Do I buy a put now? What should I do? And, and, and I said, oh my gosh, DD. Uh, if it were me, first of all, I'd never be in this position in the first place, okay, but if it were me, if, if a rich uncle left me 35 call options on, uh, uh, you know, Boston Scientific, the very first thing I would do is liquidate him. I just like what I am. If he had listened to me, he he might have saved, uh, well, most of his investment. Uh, what what happened is, is these calls end up expiring worthless, and he was able to recover only a teeny amount by uh, following the. Uh, I, I won't reveal the, the 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 site's name, but it is the most popular site regarding this form of trading. Okay, uh, if you, if. Uh, by by following their advice, by following their their methods, he ended up with only about 13 percent of what he started. Mm -hmm. another, another way of saying that is 87 percent loss. Right, right. So, <laughs> not cool. Okay, and uh, there is an edge to trading a married put, and uh, some some folks uh, really overlook this. Okay, the fact that um, uh, a uh, long call option is not equivalent to a married put. Uh, it keeps getting overlooked, okay? And, and here's the deal, Mike. For example, uh, if we were to look at the $50 uh, call options here for, for uh, CTSH, all right? This, now, this was back three years ago. I'm using a dated presentation for two reasons. Number one, the principles never change. Mm -hmm. number, two, number two, to show that I've been teaching this, you know, over 10 years, okay? Now, this, this particular one's from more than three years ago, all right? The fifty dollar call options. The the ask here is eight forty, right? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, assuming we get filled at the ask, 
what what we do is we buy no stock. Okay, we buy the fifty dollar calls at the ask. Mm -hmm. Our amount invested then is eight forty. Okay, our lowest possible exit is well, it's. It's zero, right? <laughs> if CTSH goes down, we get in trouble. Okay, and then the uh, the amount at risk then is the full amount, right? Eight dollars and forty cents. That's right. Okay, now uh, let's compare that with uh, buying the stock plus buying a put option. Here, Mike, the uh, the ask on the fifty dollar put is nine dollars ninety cents, right? We Correct. add that to, we add that to the, the the price at which the stock is trading. And that gives us the total invested amount of fifty-seven thirty-three. Mm -hmm. Now, what's our lowest possible exit now? Now that we own a fifty-dollar put option, we can get out at fifty dollars. We have the right to close our stock at any time at fifty dollars per share minimum. Yeah, it's a right, not the obligation, but the right. Okay, now I'm not fudging these numbers. I mean, this is uh, historically you can look this up. Mm -hmm. right? uh, but. Uh, but the amount at risk is the difference, $7.33. So either we have a call option, which actually risks $8.40, or we have a married put, which is supposed to be supposed to be the uh, uh, synthetic equivalent. But look, it risks $1.07 less. Where does that $1.07 come from? Well, it comes from if you had taken your 4743 and put it on deposit in an interest-bearing account for 697 days, <laughs> then you would generate a dollar and seven cents interest. Okay, that is uh, why the married put does provide a bit of an edge. All right, uh, it's it's like prepaid interest. The pricing is already priced in by the Black Scholes model. All right, so that's the first radioactive trading principle that I think is really important. Okay, uh, to force ideal size trades. Mm -hmm. Can I pause for one minute, Kurt? I'm gonna. I want to do two things very quickly. I'm gonna try to keep this under a minute and a half. Um, I want to okay. do a small advertisement, but also at the same okay. time. Uh, I want to address a question that came in. Mary had uh, written in. She had made some comments. She knew who you were talking about. But Mary says, I sure would appreciate seeing some real-time examples as opposed to something three years old, i.e. what to do now, and that would be very helpful. Oh. Well, Mary, I'm, we prefer not to come across <laughs> as giving trading advice. We're not an advisory newsletter service. What we're teaching is we're teaching our approved method of we're teaching you how to fish instead of giving you the fish itself. Now, we do show... Um, you know, some real-time examples occasionally if you're a Power Options trial member, you can go to the search at any time and you can see the general setups, the criteria that Kurt uses in the married put search for his starting point for what positions he might use. Um, but the two things I wanted to address here also as the advertisement is the blueprint, Kurt's full work in the home study kit also. They describe the techniques that we're looking at and how you can implement this into a real trading account in real time. And I wanted to mention the blueprint also because in the blueprint, Kurt does discuss this idea of long calls, of course, versus married puts, and why you have to be disciplined if you maybe want to consider that approach and what the true parity trade is and how to approach that if that's the way you want to go. Um, there's a way to do it wrong, and we just showed that. And the one other thing I wanted to mention, Kurt, we had that other archived presentation on radioactive trading in that free webinars and podcast link. Uh, about the three core principles in the trade comparison between uh, comparing the married put setup to trying to do it as an in-the-money long strangle by buying a call and buying a put or just buying a long call. And, uh, you know, your 32 times buying power is accurate, and someone might come back and say, oh, well, I would never, if I was going to invest $5,500 in a stock position, I would never take that full $5,500 and invest it into a uh, long calls. Well, yeah, but we're traders, and we have to be honest with ourselves. Well, 5,500 <laughs> might get you in 100 shares and one put, but you're not going to go over and buy one call and put the cash on hand, which is the true parity trade. You're going to get into five calls. You're going to get into 10 calls. You might get into 15 calls. You're going to overtrade. It's the nature of the investor, and now you're risking too much on that position, too much of your portfolio. That's the risk. And we'll talk about that more, Kurt, but I just wanted to give that plug in there as to how that's described. You know, what we're showing here, and uh, Mary, you can look at real-time ideas of what you might uh, look for in a new married put position on Power Options or as a Fusion subscriber as well. We'll talk about more about that later. Very good. Okay, uh, so forcing an ideal size trade, forcing yourself not to risk too much but, but too risk enough uh, is uh, of paramount importance, okay? And um, uh, what I'm going to do... Mike, here in a moment, is we're going to go to the trade simulator tool. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but uh, but quickly to to you know illustrate that point and how it works over a hundred trades. Okay, but uh, uh, real quick, like let's also do the red line and the ATM bell curve. Now the red line. Okay, sets the first standard for buying time cheaply and selling it dear. That's what we want to do is, is if we're going to buy time, which you do as an options trader when you, when you purchase an option, whether you're purchase, purchasing it to close <laughs> or whether you're uh, uh, purchasing it uh, uh, in anticipation of a move, all right, you are buying time. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is buy time cheaply. And when you sell, you want to sell it dearly. Okay, and there is one sure thing about the options trading market. What is that? Well, <laughs> all options are going to go to zero eventually, Kurt. They all have a set expiration, right. so any option is going to go to zero on us. Right. The time value, anyway. Okay. The time just, value. Yeah, the time yeah. value is going to go to zero. Sure, it could have intrinsic left. My my apologies. Right, right. But that time value will go to zero. It's going to happen. All right. Uh, and, and if we look at this here, Mike, for example, uh, let's say you were to buy a call option or it could be a put option. It doesn't matter. Uh, you buy an option that's 90 days out in time. Well, as an example, that 90 days of time might be purchased for $1.87, right? That's on the right. Other hand, on the other hand, um, if you were to buy or sell it, it's uh, it might be a dollar with only 30 days remaining. Now this tells us two things. Number one, as a as a cover call seller, I was taught to sell front month options because of the fact that uh, the value expires quickly. Okay, it, it it just plummets close to expiration, and that's good. All right. And if I do instead of selling one call that's three months away, if I sell three calls one month at a time. Right, I'm going to generate, uh, you know, three dollars. Mm -hmm. A dollar here, a dollar uh, in six in sixty days, and another dollar in ninety days. All right. So, so selling time, we want to sell near to expiration, but buying time, we want to buy buy far away. And yes, in case you're wondering why I called this radioactive trading, uh, it's because <laughs> of this exponential decay curve. Yeah, it exactly mimics. The decay line of a radioactive element. Okay, so uh, so buying time, you can buy time more cheaply. You know, 90 days uh, for a dollar 87. Well, geez, that's like 21 cents a day, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or I'm sorry, not 21, 2.1 cents a day. It's 2.1 cents a day. Uh, whereas uh, uh, 30 days away, you'd be spending 3.3 .3 cents a day. Makes sense. We're, we're we're shooting for the best deal when we. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, for example, here's Microsoft uh, puts, okay, the 30-day uh, away, the 60-day away, and the two-year away. Well, the ones that uh, are, are just uh, really close, this was in the original edition of the blueprint, the, the May 03. Right. Uh, again, we're going to talk to Mary. Mary, I'm just illustrating that these principles are timeless. You know, I've I've got <laughs> I've got examples from yesterday. All right, mm -hmm. but uh, but I think it's important to illustrate that this always works. This always works. Uh, so in, in April of '03, the May '03s uh, were were going for 50 cents worth of time value. Okay, the October '03s were going for a dollar thirty of time value. The '04s dollar ninety, and the '05s three fifty. So what's the best deal on this page as far as how much I'm going to spend per month? protecting my stock. Well, it comes out to the, the January 05 put in this case, which was about uh, two years out in time. A little bit less than two years, yeah. but pretty close to two years out in time. That's right. Well, just, just to do the math easily, Mike, uh, if, if, if I'm buying time at uh, 22 cents a month mm -hmm. and, and I'm selling time at 50 cents a month, does that put an edge on my side, yes or no? Yes, it does. Right. Okay. So that's the first standard. The first standard of uh, uh, buying time cheaply and selling it dear is the red line curve. Okay, mm -hmm. it tells us where to sell it also. All right, but the uh, next principle, the ATM bell curve. Okay, this shows how to make money after getting into a position. It sets the second standard for buying time cheaply and selling it dearly. We buy options that are either out of the money or in the money, and we want to sell options that are at the money or as close to at the money as possible. 
for example, again, this is uh, uh, some uh, bid and ask prices, but when you look at the actual price of the option and the component of it that's time value, well, mm -hmm. this is a very in-the-money option, isn't it? Okay, but the time value uh, is very small. This costs a lot, but the time value is cheap. Okay, uh, when you get to this, uh, where we're at the money, mm -hmm. you get to, to here and you say, wow, you know, that's... Uh, that's not very expensive at all. Okay. Well, is it or isn't it? <laughs> There's a lot of time value, yeah. <laughs> quite a bit of time value. Okay. When we take away uh, the uh, the actual pricing and just look at at uh, uh, the time value portion of the pricing, you see that the at out of the money buy zone is low. Uh, the in the money uh, is low. Okay. Uh, on time value, and the at the money is our sell zone. Okay, and that makes for all of the income method adjustments. Now, having having uh, gone through all this, Mike, that just kind of sets the foundation for for something a little bit more fun that we're going to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and, and uh, ask uh, the 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 audience. Let's talk about what kinds of uh, options trading are you doing now? Uh, are you doing? And, and by the way, you can uh, you can uh, answer more than one of these. Okay, so if you happen to be doing cover calls and also long calls and puts, okay, You're doing short calls and puts and long calls and puts, you know, let us know. We got a number of folks saying I'm not trading options at all. Well, hmm. actually, that number's going down as more people come in and participate. We got a serious contingency of uh, of uh, cover call traders. Doesn't oh wow. Well, it doesn't surprise me at all based on the uh, content and the title of the uh, promo email you sent out today, Kurt. That's right. Yeah. Um, let me switch presentation and, see, and uh, we'll get over into combining stocks and options, comparing head strategies. And then, uh, okay, that poll has been open one minute. Let me go ahead and share that poll. Uh, the result poll, 65% are using cover calls or the cousin naked puts right now. Mm -hmm. uh, half are using long calls and puts, and 44% are using spread trades. So pretty cool. Okay, first thing I want to do, Mike, is compare some head strategies, and uh, uh, then we'll get into the trade simulator tool and, and uh, uh, take a few questions and uh, maybe show something really cool afterwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Mike, this uh, this presentation again is is from a little while ago. Uh, we gal uh, come into one of our webinars and say, "Hey, I did really well on a cover call trade recently. Are you telling me that I could have done better with a married put?" And I said, "Yeah," <laughs> because a lot of folks are leaving the cover call strategy because of the problems with it. Mike, if if it was anything other than the stock market, mm. we. Which of the following choices would you want for your investment? Okay, if I was to say to you, Mike, uh, I've got one idea that uh, uh, you know, if if I'm right, I might make a little bit. I might make three mm -hmm. or five percent, six percent. Okay, but if I'm wrong, uh, it's possible that I could lose everything. Um, and if I don't lose everything, it's it's possible, certainly, that I could lose ten, fifteen, twenty percent. Okay, but I've got this other idea. That if I'm wrong about it, I, I can't lose very much at all, like maybe 5%. But right. if I'm right, boy, uh, there's no limit to how much I can make. Okay, Which of those two would you uh, advise your grandmother to do? Mm, well, I would go with the one that has the limited risk with the potential upside. I don't want to see someone that uh, I'm related to enter in these kind of positions where, okay, there's might be a decent probability or potential to make a 2 or 3% return, which is a good monthly return. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, when you see that first profit and loss chart we looked at, the losses stay with you, and one loss can counter five or six previous gains that you've made. And that's a common occurrence with the covered calls traders right. that you see over time. A covered call portfolio over time ends up being a sorting machine, Kurt. That's right. It ends up being a sorting machine. It sorts winning uh, stocks out of your account. So why do so many college-educated people choose the wrong one? Why do they choose the wrong options strategy? You well, know, uh, pardon my French, go but ahead. because it's sexy. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a sexy idea, you know, that uh, that receiving income for a stock that you already own, that's, man, that sounds like really, really cool stuff, mm -hmm. okay? And the idea of buying insurance, well, that's not sexy. That's that's kind of, ugh, you know, one of the last things on your list to do, do okay? Right. Now, what we're going to do is uh, do a comparison. We, we uh, I, I spoke with the young lady that, that uh, bought 300 shares of C-Trip and did very well on a, a short-term cover call play. But we're going to go ahead and show uh, what I showed students at uh, uh, UCCS Business College here just a few days ago. We're going to show them uh, how they could have done, you know, how she could have done better just right. by buying insurance. Selling a cover call limits your profit on a winning trade, and merit, buying a married put does not limit it in the same way. So let's say we pick a winner, okay? Uh, here we have the uh, details on the C trip trade, okay? Okay. Where where our caller had uh, bought uh, 300 shares of C trip at 57.88 and simultaneously sold to open. Three covered calls, okay, at two dollars and thirty cents. So it's this is called a buy right. It's a simultaneous uh, hedge. You know, she's she's picking up the stock and she's also taking a little discount on the stock by selling the this was the November sixty dollar calls. Okay? Mm -hmm. So her cost basis per share is not fifty seven eighty eight. It's fifty five fifty eight. Okay, and the stock did go up. Okay, it went went up in the near term and did very well. Okay, but the cover call play caps the game. And here's what happened: she was assigned. Okay, C trip was assigned at sixty dollars. Uh, her cost basis from selling the cover calls uh, was uh, fifty-five fifty-eight, and so her profit per share is four dollars and forty-two cents. Now I know, <laughs> I know that's actually pretty darn good. <laughs> That's actually four dollars and forty-two cents per share. Good for her. Okay. Mm -hmm. And no matter how you describe it, whether it's four dollars forty-two cents per share profit, whether it's uh, a thirteen hundred and thirty-six dollar profit, okay, because of how many shares she had, or uh, if you describe it by way of how much she made versus how much she put in, you know, she only put in fifty-five fifty-eight, not the full fifty-seven eighty-eight purchase price. Mm -hmm. But but only fifty five fifty eight because it was a simultaneous it was a buy right okay simultaneous uh, selling a call and buying stock so she made seven point nine percent in sixteen days now here's something I think is rather dishonest and it's what the cover call gurus like to do a lot they like to go into <laughs> an annualized return right <laughs> now that just implies Mike that uh, this is going to happen every sixteen days that's right yeah. Okay, and, and we know that that's not really how it, how it goes. You've you've got opportunities uh, to do this uh, uh, just you know every three months or every four months something. Mm -hmm. so, okay, now let's hedge with a long put instead of a short call. Our caller had said, okay, so I did really well with the cover call play here recently, and you're telling me that you could have done better if 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 you bought insurance. And I said, yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. We use the historical tools of power options to go back and to see what the puts were trading at on November 4th mm -hmm. when she picked up her shares of C-Trip at 57.88. And following the dictates of the blueprint, we'd be buying a far out in time, this is seven months away, $65 in the money put option mm -hmm. for 13.78. Now, Mike, here's the part where it's not sexy. <laughs> Uh, instead of being paid two dollars and thirty cents to hedge this stock, we're paying thirteen dollars and seventy cents to hedge this stock. Right. It doesn't that look doesn't. attractive, does it? I mean, that's going to need a significant move in the underlying stock price in order to realize any profit, isn't it, Kurt? Well, that's that's what folks think. They they really do think that, but it's not the case. You see, as as the uh, stock goes up, the put does come down in value, but it comes down slowly comes down slowly. Yeah, we don't lose one to one with the put, do we, Kurt? No. When it's far out in time, like like we always uh, pick our stock. Uh, I'm sorry, pick our put. Okay. When it's far out in time, uh, the near term fluctuations don't have as deep a, a, an effect. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but the, the the point is here, our cost basis per share here is sixteen dollars higher. Instead of fifty five fifty eight, we're spending seventy one fifty eight. 
Now again, I know alarms are going off. Oh God, this man! I don't want to spend that much. That didn't sound good. Okay, but don't forget, you now have a privilege, not an obligation, to deliver your stock at 60. But you have the privilege to exit your stock, no matter what happens to the stock, at 65. Okay, so the difference now uh, is. Uh, uh, only 9.19% of the total invested amount. So we're keeping our losses, our possible losses, down in single digits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we showed this to our uh, trader, and she said, wow, okay. So does it make a better return? Yes, it did. Okay. Uh, right after the earnings announcement that pushed C-Trip up, the, C -tri the shares went to 72.19. Now that means that the put options collapse, right? Right. They're going to fall in price. It has to. Right, but I'll tell you what, for the, for the uh, stock to go up $17, <laughs> the put option only came down about $6, okay, meaning that we keep the difference. If you were to sell, you don't have to exercise your puts, okay, just because they're $65 puts doesn't mean you get out at 65 mm -hmm. You can sell those shares of stock for $72.19 because that's where they are, and you can sell your put option, which still retains some time value. And then the total back into the account would be seventy nine eighty nine. Well, remember what the cost basis was. The cost basis was seventy one fifty eight from the previous page. Right. Okay. All right. So now our total back into the account per share is eight thirty one. Now let's compare the returns. Okay. Four dollar and forty two cent per share profit or eight thirty one. Thirteen thirty six uh, profit or twenty four ninety three. And Looking at the percent, you know, making, uh, gosh, what did she make? Four dollars and forty-two cents based on an investment of fifty. Uh, three. Oh, oh. Fifty-three. Yeah, -ish. fifty-three ish. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Kurt. Okay. Yeah. We're making twenty-four ninety-three based on an investment of um, uh, of seventy-two dollars or so. Okay. Uh, it's a bigger return. Now, uh, I say nine days because uh, it was right after expiration that the stock's price went to here. Now, in truth, the stock's price went higher by uh, a week later, which was the uh, November expiration. Nothing magic about November expiration when you hold a June put. I'm just saying if it was the same day, gosh, we would have done even better mm -hmm. <laughs> if we, we ex exited the position. Uh, it'd be better. So, uh, so that's the idea. A lot of times, folks, uh, we 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 shoot for the security, you know, quote unquote security, of selling calls to pick up a little bit of premium and feel that that change jingling in our pocket. But in fact, Mike, if a stock goes up twenty percent or better, like uh, C Trip did in this example, can it also go down by twenty percent or better? Absolutely, and we see that all too frequently. And as again we've discussed, even strong quality companies, you know, companies that look good, that have been performing well, that look like they have strong management, or maybe even Fortune 500 companies, we see this from time to time, can have a 20 or 30 day time period where they drop 10, 15, 20 percent easily. And unfortunately, we've even seen large companies drop 25, 30, 35 percent overnight due to an early earnings warning announcement, poor earnings rumor of a boardroom scandal or anything of that nature, things that we cannot control, things that we cannot see on paper and we're not privy to, and that's where you can get hurt. I mean, if you think about it, if you're averaging 3% per month, and I know, Kurt, you're going to have a poll on this one potentially later as well, but if you're averaging 3% per month with covered calls and you're trading maybe five positions a month in the second month, if you have a stock that suddenly drops down 35%, well, if you look, went to liquidate your portfolio at that time, you're still going to be at a loss. You might have had only one loss out right. of 10 trades, right 90% of the time. You made 3% when you were signed on those other t uh, nine positions, but a 25 to 30% sudden loss on one of those stocks, you liquidated everything right then, you're behind. You're That's lower right. than you started. Yeah, and it's being right more often than you're wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, in a moment, we're going to see uh, an example uh, with the trade similar tool. I keep alluding to it, all right? But we're going to see an example of being right, being wrong more often than you're right, but still making money. Um, um, Mike, I accidentally uh, cut this this uh, poll off before uh, the full minute had elapsed, but uh, but we still got a pretty good sample there. A lot of folks voted. 
I said, are you happy with your, with your 12 months performance? And rather than saying just straight up yes or no, uh, you know, it, it's a spectrum of answers. So 10% said absolutely, I am kicking butt and taking names, and I want to congratulate those guys. 19% uh, said, eh, you know, I'm making money but not enough. But, you know, let me congratulate them too because they're making money. <laughs> The, the, the lion's share, 52% said mixed emotions. I see potential, but I need to change my game. 14% mm -hmm. say I lost money, and 15% are, are ready to quit just to stop the hemorrhaging. So, Mike, I'd say that more are unhappy with their 12 months performance than are happy. Would you say that that's a fair assumption? I would say that that's a fair uh, analysis of the results, Kurt. Right. Okay. Uh, we're going to uh, ask you a real simple question. If I could solve only one of those problems, if I could give you only one of these abilities, what would you make it? Would you would you say, uh, I'm not good at picking stocks. Make me a wizard. You know, make me like Warren Buffett. Okay. Or I stink at timing trades. Make me a prophet. <laughs> make me know what the future is, or at least know what it is more often. Mm-hmm. Uh, or do you just want to make a little more when you're right? Or do you just not want to get hurt so badly when you're wrong, right? Uh, or shoot, you know, there's there's nothing you can help me with. I, I don't have any problems at all with my trading. Okay. Right. Let's, let's leave that pull up there for about 20 more seconds. Let it populate. I'd like uh, to get everybody to participate with this. Okay. I just want to not get hurt badly when I'm wrong. I just want to make a little more when I'm right. I think at timing trades make me a profit, or I'm not good at picking stocks make me a wizard. Or some smart Alex are going to say, <laughs> shoot, I don't have any problems at all. Okay, so that's Well, I don't minute. think that I do. <laughs> <laughs> I know I uh, certainly uh, do better. Stay on top of my own uh, you know, uh, emotions. That would be good. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, the, the uh, radioactive profit machine forces me not to make uh, silly decisions. Or impulse okay. decisions, even. Exactly. 17% say, uh, make me a wizard. I'm not good at picking stocks. 8% say, I stink at timing trades. Make me a profit. Okay. Uh, and 31%, I just want to make a little more when I'm right. Now, Mike, those first two answers are about fundamental analysis and technical analysis, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We need to, yeah. to research and uh, pick our exits a little bit better, time our trades a little bit more, and, and get into the better stocks. Sure. Well, I want to point out that those first two answers combined, even though it's where most folks go when we think about becoming better at trading, mm -hmm. when we think about becoming better at trading, we're either thinking about timing our exits and entries better, right? right, or we're thinking about picking better stocks. Well, strangely enough, we've only got 25% that are thinking either one of those two things. Right, mm -hmm. and, and 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 then nearly half are saying, "Hey, <laughs> I just want to not get hurt badly when I'm wrong." Uh, and you know what? This is what I can help you with. This is what I can help you with. And and, and in a moment, we're going to see that that's probably the most important uh, way to go. And I'm going to show you even something new today, Kurt, that I think is going to appeal to uh, what was that seventy percent of our audience? Yeah. Yeah, I want to show you something new that I've been playing around with. It's nothing. Nothing exciting, but it's common, and it's a, it's a discussion that we can get into, and we'll get into when we take a look at this. But let's, let's go your route, and then I'll tell you what I want you to do this time. <laughs> hey, very good. All right, so here we are in the Trade Simulator tool. All right. And the Trade Simulator, what it is not, it's not uh, meant to predict what your trading record will be. Right. This is a it's simulation. A tool. Yeah, it's a simulation. What it is meant to do is a tool to uh, kind of report to you what your results may be if you follow a certain course of action uh, as far as how much uh, your target turn is and your loss limit is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, let's let's run that a couple of times with a 10% target return, 10% loss limit, and a coin toss, 50% chance of winning. Yeah, so let's assume that we're just buying stock, Kurt, that when we're right, we're going to try to close our position when we have a 10% profit. When we're wrong, we're going to close our position if we have a 10% loss, and we're just buying 100 stocks, let's say. Right. Now, I just pressed the simulation uh, 
uh, key there to get things going. And uh, so trade number one, we win. So we take our ten thousand dollars and roll it up to eleven thousand, right? Trade mm -hmm. number two, we take a loss. So we take our eleven thousand dollars and bring it down to nine thousand nine hundred because after all we lost eleven hundred, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then two wins and then a loss and so on and so forth, and all the way to the bottom. Now there's a string of wins, string of losses. Common trading and record. Over, yeah, over here on the left, we see that we won more often than lost. That's good. Mm -hmm. The high value, at one point, we had an 85% return. Okay, uh, The stock went way up into the stratosphere. Uh, not the stock, but our, our account. Went way up into almost double. Okay, But along the way, we had a low value of 45.02. Oh. So that's a 55% drawdown. And in the end, we ended up with a not very impressive... 10.46% gain. Mm -hmm. Okay, after 100 trades, I would expect to be further ahead than you know a thousand bucks. And in truth, uh, we did this one without commissions. If we had used commissions, I think we'd uh, find ourselves about flat. And uh, another thing is, if we apply this into real-world trading, Kurt, many of us might have abandoned this trading style once we hit that loss of 50% of our account. You right. know, once we hit a low value of five thousand dollars, we all might have just gone out of this technique at that point. Right. Now, Mike, uh, I'm going to ask you what your biggest return with the radioactive profit machine strategy was in the last uh, in the last few years. Well, we have it archived in the uh, webinars there. We're talking about the silver wheat and trade. Well, that was 59.8% gain using the radioactive trading techniques. Now, that's not common. <laughs> that's not no. an average no. of what I get on every RPM. It's possible based on the setup, but that was my largest win. Okay. Let's divide that by, like, Eight, <laughs> and and uh, instead of a sixty percent return, let's just shoot for a seven and a half percent return. Okay, mm -hmm. now that's less than the ten percent I just put up there, right? That's right, Kurt. Mm -hmm. That's less than the ten less than the ten percent. And uh, tell me about your biggest loss from the last couple of years. The biggest loss I suffered last year was. Um, I apologize, four point five percent on uh, TLM Talisman Energy. Okay. How much did the stock itself actually lose? Uh, regrettably, uh, close to about 45%. I got into the stock at around 20. Um, it's recently, I think it's still trading now around uh, $11 and uh, $12 per share. I got out when the stock was around a little bit below $12 on the position, but it was only a 4.5% loss. Right. It's only a 4.5% loss because of your uh, insurance policy, because of the fact that you picked up the, uh, the put option. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and run the simulation and see what happens, okay? Now, here's something kind of interesting, Mike. We actually had more losses than wins in this run. We had a win coming out of the gate, and then mm -hmm. three losses in a row, and then another win, another loss, and another loss, okay? And we ended up with more losses than wins, and yet took the $10,000, and this time had a nail-biting back... Uh, 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 what do you call this drawdown of what nine percent, eight percent? That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only eight percent, and then ended up with thirty-three thousand at the end. Mm -hmm. Well, how can that be? We didn't have as big returns, but we were able to control the only thing we can control in the market, and that's limited risk. Right now, Mike, I'm going to flash. Okay, go I ahead. Flash these results, and, th and then I know that you want to. Uh, I want to go back to the trade data. simulator tool. Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll do that. Uh, Forty-two percent. The, the the largest answer that we had here was, I just want to not get hurt badly when I'm wrong. Mike, can can that be done? Can <laughs> can, can we absolutely limit our losses down to single digit percents? You and I do it every day, as does Ernie, as does the, yep. do the hundred and thousands of blueprint owners, actually, and uh, Fusion subscribers as well. Right. Okay. So, yeah, we can keep our losses down in the single-digit range and uh, still enjoy returns that are, that are decent. All right. Let's do okay. two quick things here, Kurt. Why don't you go ahead and click ahead. on that covered call tab for me up at the top? And this is just right. a default we set in for covered call traders to take a look here using the trade simulator tool. Now we set here a target return of 5%, so 5% return if assigned. Loss limit of 10%, maybe you're using stop orders or things of that nature. And a 50% probability of loss. Now you see down here below, if you're wrong more often than you're right, you're devastated. 
Let's see if we can get yeah. one that has more wins than losers before we do something, Kurt. Yeah, we're going to change you know that. Gonna... We're going to change a couple things there. Why don't you change, change the probability of a loss? Let's change Go it ahead. to 30. 30% you know. probability. Yeah. So, so we're going to be, uh, we're going to have a 7 in 10 chance every time mm -hmm. of winning, right? That's right. Okay. All right, so here's, here's a good number of wins. There's 64 wins. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, ouch. <laughs> Not good. Let's, let's see if we run that again. Oh, 73. Okay, now we're talking. If we had 73 wins, we'd have a drawdown along the way of 26%, but we would end up maybe doubling our money. Well, I had a discussion with a customer yesterday. I want to change two more things here, huh? Kurt. To us, more realistic, uh -huh. well, investors will say, oh, well, I want to be in the money for more safety. Okay, well, if you're selling in the money covered calls, guess what? You're not getting a 5% return. You're closer to a 3% return. Okay. Maybe even lower than that. And also, they may say, well, I'm following the IBD rules, so I set a stop loss at 8%. Okay, well, let's okay, try that. Let's do that. And then let's run it again. Let's, let's make sure that we have a 30% chance of being being wrong. Oh, my goodness, look at this. We are mm -hmm. right 72 times and ended up. Down about 28%. Yeah. Oh, 18%. I am sorry, 18%. Here we are winning 73 times and ending up with $9,000. Now, folks, uh, again, what we're doing is we're showing how to skew risk and reward. And by using the covered call, all right, even though we're right, more often than we're wrong, we're still losing money, and it's because of capping our returns and allowing our losers to, to mm -hmm. run. Even a very, very disciplined uh, stop here of 8%, we're getting into trouble. How about that? <laughs> How about that, Mike? Thanks for for bringing that up and showing it to me. I I, I actually hadn't played that. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's I it's very telling, and it's just it shows the sorting machine aspect over time. You know, you can be right almost seventy seventy five percent of the time. Okay, so you didn't lose that much, maybe in the ending amount or even as the total, but you're not getting ahead. Right, that's right. Well, uh, an, an, enough of. Uh, talking about the cover calls, maybe we should talk about a, a solution, okay? Um, how much time have we got? Let me just take a look here. About 15 minutes. We're at 12.54, so maybe about 20 minutes there, Kurt. Okay. Uh, we've, we've already talked about the difference between uh, cutting your losers short, letting your winners run, and doing the reverse, okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blaze through this, all right, rather than actually belabor the point. We're going to, here we go, hang on just a sec. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, shabam! All right, now the cover call uh, and protective put have the same outlook, the same riskiness rating, even though I don't think that belongs here. But they're very different, aren't they, Mike, in terms of uh, the potential payout? Well, yeah, okay. that's right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So uh, in a 12-month period, I played Altera Technologies twice. Okay, The first time I made 12%, even though the stock went up 17.3. And the second time, I lost 5.6%, even though the stock went down 21.8. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I wanted to do was show a, a real-life example. Mike, I was right one time and wrong one time, so that's about a 50% record, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but uh, if I had been right and made 17.3 and then wrong and then lost 21.8 on a similar amount invested, would I be ahead? Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, if you, if you make 17.3%, you lose 21.8%, we're down. We're not winning. However, using the proper technique, if you make 12% on the one trade and you only lose 5.6 on the way down because you limited risk effectively, then you're ahead. Right. Now, let's look at the players. There's, uh, there's going to be a stock seller at this table. There's going to be a naked put seller at this table. The market maker is also part of it. And then there's me. Okay. And uh, so here's the structure of a married put trade where we're picking up shares of Altera plus a put option that's in the money and for out in time. 
My total investment amount is 30.85. My guaranteed exit is 29, and the amount at risk is $1.85. Okay, the difference. And $1.85 put against 30.85 equals 6% at risk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, having said that, this is how I structure the trade. Stock goes up, and I exit with a 12% gain in seven weeks. Okay. Now, I see similar patterns. Uh, plus, I've also got a certain amount of what's called recency bias. Recently, I made money <laughs> with uh, Altera Technologies, so I get in again. But my timing was poor. I get in, and uh, uh, and the stock goes down. In fact, it heads down even further from there. All right, but uh, no matter where it had been, even over the next five months, even if it went even lower, my uh, radioactive profit machine was limited to losses down to 5.6. So my, uh, here I made about $1,800. Here I lost around $900. Mm -hmm. And the point is, uh, the difference is nearly 1000 bucks. Even though I was wrong half the time, and even though when I was wrong, I was really, really wrong. All right. It wasn't about fundamental analysis. It wasn't about technical. It was all about hedging. It was all mm -hmm. about keeping myself out of trouble. And if you don't think that hedging is important, here take a look at this other position that I was in uh, a number of years ago. I got into Digital River, Mike. It had wonderful fundamentals. I picked it off of the IBD list. Mm -hmm. Here's a little double bottom pattern that they like to uh, uh, say to use. And then, bam, uh, ouch. <laughs> we, we had an overnight drop of over 35%, and then it went down from there. Right. How about them apples? If I had been trading with an 8% stop order, what do you think would have happened to my account? Well, unfortunately, what happens in that situation is that you do get closed out of the position, but your 8% yeah. stop order is really a market order saying, get me out of this position whenever this stock price is triggered. So when your broker does that, well, it went beyond the 8% stop loss you set, but you get filled at the price they can get, and that's that 35% loss. So your your stop order gets violated. You get filled at the worst possible price, and uh, that's going to, uh, for a covered call trader, we just kind of showed, that might wipe out 10 or 12 previous trades. Yeah. So that stop doesn't actually uh, take care of any uh, risk at all. Uh, Mike, if, if I had uh, not used any kind of uh, loss mitigation, and uh, including a stop order, if I had used mm -hmm. nothing and I just relied on getting out when the going was good, I would have to pick a year later, <laughs> I would have to pick the exact right time to get out and then have no profit at all, okay, over a period of more than a year of holding, and I would have had to pick at this exact point and still uh, not done very well, okay? So, uh, so would you like to know what my actual loss was on this? Of course. 5.7%, mm -hmm. which means that I had 94 of my marbles still left. And uh, uh, let's uh, go back a few pages here, okay? We're going to look at this uh, setup. Mike, in truth, uh, I've, I've shown this where it's 100 shares and one put, but in truth, I put in 500 shares and five puts. Well, it's scalable, isn't it, Kurt? Yeah, it's scalable to what you have to trade. For example, uh, with $1.85 per share at risk, even if I get into 500 shares and five puts, it's still 6%. It's still 6% of whatever I put in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, 500 shares at $1.85 risk, this was $925. And at the time, I was trading in an account of more than $100,000. So that ends up being less than 1% of my total account being at risk in this one trade. Now, without uh, without showing the cool stuff, okay, we are going to show the cool stuff here next, but without showing the cool stuff yet, if you limited risk, I'm asking the, the audience now, if you limited risk like what we showed, 6% of that particular trade and only 1% or less of your total account, would that have made a difference in your trading last year? Now, out of the folks that answered, we, we had uh, only Gosh, only around 20, 29 percent, I think, mm -hmm. say that they were happy with their trading. And everybody else said they're not happy with their trading. Right. So, what kind of what kind of difference would that make? Would you have, uh, for example, uh, if if last year you lost overall, but you would have won if you'd have done that? Go ahead and let us know. 
if you might still have lost, but at least lost much less, let us know. And uh, if you would have been one of those very few that said, I, was, I am very happy with my trading, I think it was like, well, what was it, Mike, like 5% or 6%? So six, uh, yeah, something along those lines. Yes, sir, 5 or 6%. Mm -hmm. It said there, I'm very happy with my trading. If that would have been you, then let us know. Okay. All right. And let me go ahead and close that poll and share the results. Okay, 13% said I lost over last year, but I would have won if I'd have done that. If, if I'd have just done that, I would have won. Okay, 48% said, well, you know, I might have lost, but I would have lost much less. So would those guys be in a better place? Absolutely. Yeah, and then uh, 39 Yeah, and then 39 percent said I would have been one of those that said I'm very happy with my trading. I want to find the exact number. Hang on just a second. Are mm -hmm. you happy with your 12 months performance? We said, oh, it was 10 percent. Said absolutely. I am kicking butt and taking names. Okay, uh, but uh, we would have, would have brought that number up to uh, about four times. You know, mm -hmm. 39% would have said, I'm very happy with my trade. I would have been one of those. Very cool. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> First of all, Mike, who is the patsy sitting at that table? <laughs> uh, there was the person that sold the stock, right? Now, now if he sold stock short and it went up 17.3 and he sold stock short again later on and it went down 30%, is he a winner overall? Yes, he's going to make out over time. Mm -hmm. uh, was it me? Was I the patsy? Did I finance everybody at the table? Well, no. We showed that. You had a position that you did gain 12%, but right. then, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Yeah. You only lost 56 on the way down. Yeah, I, I made 12% on the way up, lost 56 on the way down. Uh, similar amounts uh, invested. It was nearly a $1,000 gain. So, no, I, I wasn't the patsy. The person that sold me the puts won the first time. You know, the first time the puts end up expiring worthless, and uh, he gets to keep all of his premium. But the second time, when I go to buy puts to insure my stock, he ended up on the hook. You know, Altera was around. It's around thirty-two dollars a share. All right, and he had sold me the fifty-dollar puts for you know two, three dollars. <laughs> Uh, so that's about an $18 difference in the stock, and uh, he does get to keep his 2 or $3, but good Lord, that's that's vouchful. Okay, now we're not going to plug into the trade simulator tool because we already did that. All okay? right. Mm -hmm. but, but but how does this change things for you? Well, we already talked about changes things for a lot of folks. But let's get a little bit more uh, exciting here. Okay, because I know folks like to take income. Remember, we said that uh, taking income from sh from a stock you already own is sexy, and buying insurance is not, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, Mike, what do you figure the first thing people say when they look at this? When they look at me buying insurance, buying a put option that's far away in time and deep in the money, what do they normally say? Especially when they look at that total invested amount. Well, I don't get it. Why are you doing this? I mean, you must be extremely bullish. You're not going to make a dime on this position until the stock's trading above uh, or trading at thirty dollars and ninety-five cents. You need such a significant move in the underlying stock to realize a profit. Right. Well, that is front front month thinking that's speaking there. Front month thinking. You're thinking that that put is going to come down dollar for dollar as the stock goes up, and therefore putting $3.50 in there, I'm expecting a bigger than $3.50 move. Well, that's not necessarily so. Okay. In fact, uh, Mike, uh, would you believe that I was completely bulletproof, meaning that I could not lose at all, but I still could gain by the time the stock got to $29.40? Well, I, I, I can believe that because I've done it myself, <laughs> but we want to show the audience how that happens. Yeah, we're going to show them how to do it, okay, and this mm -hmm. is kind of cool. So so uh, folks in the audience may be saying, okay, Kurt, you invested $30.85. You can't make a dime until Altera goes from twenty seven thirty five to thirty ninety five, and that's not the truth. Right? Mm -hmm. There's a gap, certainly, between your uh, break-even, your so-called break-even, and the lowest possible price at which you can get out when you're holding that put option, okay? But the income methods reduce the gap. And uh, I was actually bulletproof way before the stock even touched 
3085. Bulletproof means that it can no longer lose. Now here's how. The stock goes up. If the stock goes up, the puts come down. But all of them come down, right? Right. Okay. When Altera goes to $29.40, that in the money put that I bought, the $29 put option far out in time, is it in the money anymore? Well, no. It's now actually out of the money, Kurt, isn't it? Right. It's no longer in the money, and obviously the put has uh, come down in price. Okay. But uh, the point I want to make is we're below that so-called break-even price of 3085. Okay. But I was able to take a credit and leave the upside open. Here's how. Okay. Income method number three is what I call the boatproof vests. What I did, Mike, was sell the $29 put options. Now, okay. again, the stock has gone up about $2. The put option has come down on about $0.98. Cents. Do you remember how it used to be $3.50? Right. That it was, was $3.50 when I bought it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so uh, I sell the, the March $29 put option at $2.52 and simultaneously buy the November $30 put option for $1.62. Now, I, I want to make sure that everybody understands, this is November, this is March of the next year, okay? <laughs> All right, and I'm doing this on October 15th. Why am I doing this? Well, there's an earnings announcement coming up. The earnings announcement is going to be November 5th. And if it's November, I'm sorry, November 4th. If it's November 4th and the expiration of November is the third week in November, I'm going to be able to witness that earnings announcement, but I don't want to be in trouble for sticking around and watching. Okay, so Mike, first of all, uh, have I uh, paid to do this or have I taken a credit? Well, you've taken in a credit, okay, because you're selling a put that you own for 252, and then you're buying. You're using those proceeds to buy a new put option. In this case, with a higher strike price and closer in for a dollar sixty-two. So you're generating ninety cents here of net credit. Right. Now, again, I like to say, uh, don't time trades, trade time. Mm -hmm. In truth here, this $30 put option, right now, the, uh, the stock, is, as I said before, is trading at $29.40, right? Right. Mm -hmm. so, so this put option is in the money, right? Yes. We're now by in the money 60. again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is in the money by sixty cents. So this dollar sixty-two, sixty of it is intrinsic value. So only a dollar two of it is time value. On the other hand, this two dollars and fifty-two cents, all of that is time value. So I'm picking, I'm using time to pay for intrinsic value. Mm -hmm. I'm using, I'm using uncertainty, which is what time value is based on. It's based on uncertainty. I'm using uncertainty to pay for certainty. Kind of cool. Another way of thinking of it is I've I've been paid to raise my possible payout, by dollar, and 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 here's why. Okay, we started out uh, with a put option that costs three dollars and fifty cents. Now, a portion of that is time value, right? Mm -hmm. And a portion of that's intrinsic value. As my stock goes up, the intrinsic value disappears, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. You're going to lose that intrinsic value because we're now out of the money. Right. But do I lose it? I don't lose it because I also own the, the stock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for every dollar that the stock goes up, yes, the intrinsic value of that put goes away, but my stock goes up dollar for dollar. So I'm losing in column A, and I'm winning in column B, and I own both columns. So no great shakes in the intrinsic value portion. But look at just the time value portion. Mm -hmm. Just the time value portion has actually expanded, and that's because of the at-the-money bell curve that we showed at the very beginning of this presentation. Okay, Because uh, $29 is the strike price, and now it's trading to close to $29. Now the time value has actually expanded. It's gone up. I bought that put when it was in the money. Now it's out of the money. And so right. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to use this time value to buy intrinsic value, and that's what's happened. Okay, so the cost basis, Mike, for the stock and the put was originally 3085, right? We were at 3085. Right. By using the bulletproof vest, by by doing a spread trade where I sell uh, a put that I already own, 
really, and swap it for another put that's closer in. I take a credit of 90 cents, so my new cost basis is 29.95. Let me ask you, do I still own the stock? Yes, we're still invested in the stock. We still have that there for us. Do I still own a put? Yes, you still have that protected as we see here. We've cut our risk down by doing this particular adjustment. All right, but the new put is a $30 put, so what's my risk? Well, your risk now is negative. A negative at risk means that even if the stock collapses to one collapses to one dollar per share or less, you're still guaranteed to make a profit of five cents. How about that? Okay. And Mike, is there any short call that's limiting my growth in case the stock decides to go up? No, not at all. We have not capped our growth. We still have that unlimited upside from that initial profit and loss chart we saw. Right. Okay, so this is what we call negative risk or bulletproof, and when we're in the bulletproof zone, uh, we don't have any more uh, worries, even even though there's an earnings announcement coming up, okay, mm -hmm. no worries, and that's kind of a good place to be. Mike, what did happen with that earnings announcement is the stock went up, and when it went up, I was able to get out with a 12% gain. Now, uh, if we asked about commissions, I've had people say, well, what about commissions? Uh, well, yeah. If I'm going to be really truthful about it, it was an 11.9% gain because commissions did figure into this. Mm -hmm. Okay, but still, <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's really not a bad uh, scene, is it? I mean, if you make 11.9% on your original investment uh, in uh, in three weeks, it was bulletproof, and then four weeks later, uh, completely out of the position without um, without any risk, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we started out with 6% risk, and we ended up with no risk, and then uh, got out with 12% gain. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to ask folks, what do you think of a spread trade, okay, that uh, come but leaves the upside open? What do you think of that idea? Is that pretty cool? Uh, a lot of folks like that. <laughs> 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 a lot of folks are digging it. <laughs> Meets the shiitake mushrooms that I cover calls. And uh, uh, an even more popular answer is, whoa, I didn't know you could do that. Do you got any more? Well, yeah. We got piles more. Um, I teach 10 different income method adjustments, and uh, most of them are spread trades that are done in the context of stock ownership. Mm -hmm. And the spread trade itself might have risk or it might even have infinite risk, like income method number five is infinite risk if you didn't own the stock. But because you own the stock, there's no risk. It's kind of cool. Okay, let me go ahead and close that poll, Mike, and share the results. Uh huh. Did I get it? I'm not. There you go, Kurt. Oh, okay. So be, beats the shiitake mushrooms that I cover calls, that ended up pulling ahead, so that was our most popular answer. Okay. The second most popular was, hey, I didn't know you could do that got anymore. By the way, can, can we do what I just showed in an IRA account? Absolutely. All of the 10 income methods can be done in a, stand, well, a non-standard IRA. What I mean by that is uh, brokerages such as Options Express and Thinkorswim, they're a little bit more liberal of what they allow, and there are restricted IRA accounts for options trading. So you should be able to do all 10 income methods. Now, I myself, trade these techniques in a more restricted sort of IRA account with Fidelity, um, as well as I do have an Options Express account also. Um, but I can do all of the income methods except for seven, though I can apply to be able to do that. Income method number eight, which I rarely use anyway personally, and uh, the full method of income method number five, but there are other ways to implement income method number five. So pretty much every income method can be done even in the most restricted of IRA accounts if you're approved for just level one options trading. Right. If you can just buy cover, uh, buy calls and puts and sell covered Cover calls, calls. Yep. you can do almost every one of our income methods. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, the original blueprint sold with just four income methods. Now we have ten, <laughs> mm -hmm. but the original blueprint sold with just four income methods, and uh, and the price tag on it was two hundred eighty nine dollars. Uh, now we've uh, expanded the price a little bit. I'm going to ask what what. Uh, uh, I'm going to ask two questions. Okay, you did heads I win, tails I win more. Would you like that? Okay. Then this is just to the spread traders, but I, I know we've got uh, quite a number of spread traders on the line. 
Now, on Thursday, Mike, we're going to go into greater detail on some spread trades. The one that I showed today wasn't a true spread trade because we're taking an existing put and swapping it for another put. Mm -hmm. and even though that's entered as a spread trade order in my uh, Options Express account, it, it does get ordered as a spread trade order. Uh, some folks might argue and say, well, wait a minute, that's not really a spread trade because you already own one of the legs. I right. Say, oh, okay. All right. But uh, uh, most of the income methods are spread trades, true spread trades that are done properly in the context of a radioactive profit machine and introduce no risk. And it's really okay. All right. My, my five wisers say, I like my risk to be higher than reward, keeps me young. But the rest are saying, uh, if every spread trade that I made was. Uh, Heads I win, tails I win more. I, I would like that. Okay, cool. All right, so finally, uh, what I'm going to do is is uh, ask what would you expect to pay for a study course or seminar that takes you through all 10 of these kinds of adjustments, and then we'll make it available. Um, by the way, you're not committing to anything here, right? Just, right. Mm -hmm. just, just give it a, uh, a shot. I think you ought, to, you ought to pay for something like that. And this is our final poll. Well, I might, I might uh, also ask for some feedback, okay? But this is our final poll uh, regarding the presentation. I might ask for some feedback on the presentation. That would be, I guess, a final, final poll. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right, folks. Uh, we've got another five seconds left on that. Three. Two, one, and close it. Okay. All right. Forty-one percent said, "Oh, around fifty bucks." Hey, I've got news for you. I couldn't sell this thing at fifty bucks. <laughs> my my original. I'm serious. My original blueprint had been, uh, you know, again, like I said, uh, it, it was only four income methods. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 2003, when I began selling the blueprint, or actually 2000, yeah, 2003, when I began selling the blueprint. It, uh, I, I did some price point uh, experimentation, and I thought, you know what? I could just sell it as a hardcover copy book in the bookstore for 50 bucks, and we had very poor results with people wanting to buy it. When I hiked up the price to over $200, you know what? People started buying it. In fact, people were pre-ordering it before we were finished publishing. And uh, something that I decided to do with that, Mike, was add uh, support. I said, look, uh, write me at support at radioactivetrading.com if you have any questions regarding any of these strategies mm -hmm. uh, for life. And that that was uh, the final selling point uh, before the guarantee. After that, the guarantee. <laughs> after after we added the guarantee, people said, oh, okay, you know, there's there's value to this. Now let's see. Forty-seven percent said more like three hundred fifty bucks, and that's actually correct. Um, and and we had twelve percent say, hey, I've spent already have spent mm -hmm. over three grand for a less complete solution. I think probably what they're talking about is one of those weekend seminars where you learn how to get into trouble. Par pardon my saying so, but uh, uh, you know, maybe some of y'all could uh, send me some comments. <laughs> did, did you learn everything you needed to in those two days? Mm -hmm. uh, probably not. Okay. We can go ahead and hide that, Mike, and uh, uh, we're going to take folks over to the, the products page, let you know where to pick up the blueprints, and also I'd like to invite you Thursday. Uh, they're uh, a little more complex than what we showed today. The blueprint is $339. Uh, if you're getting it within the United States, there's $11 shipping, so that's uh, 350 That's what about half of you said, said you might expect to pay. And then... Uh, uh, the uh, radioactive trading home study kit uh, adds a, quite a bit of value. Each of the income methods is dealt with in a multimedia format um, and in a more detailed manner than uh -huh. the blueprint. But the blueprint is also still included so that you can have a reference. And uh, uh, the uh, radioactive trading home study kit and the blueprint both have 100% guarantee. Mike, uh, what, what do you call it when your cost basis for your stock and your put is less than the strike price of the put? No, oh, we showed that already. That was bulletproof, wasn't it? Bulletproof. And bulletproof simply means that you can't lose, right? 
That's right. All right. If we're going to talk about bulletproofing, uh, we may as well start our relationship that way. So here's a bulletproof trade that you can make if, if you pick up the blueprints or the home study kit today. Uh, it's you're going to have zero risk, and the reason for the zero risk is if if you don't feel as though it's giving you the value. Hey, shoot! I demand <laughs> that you send it back. We don't want you to to to, to be feeling as though you were treated unfairly. Uh, go ahead and send that thing back, and, and uh, we'll buy it back. We have a very low return rate, but uh, when we do have returns, it's very quick and painless. Okay, Mike, uh, what kind of questions have come through? All right, I'll just uh, go through a few of these real quick. Uh, John, John had mentioned uh, when you launched at that last poll, he says, I just ordered it five ninety nine. That's right, because the, uh, the home study kit includes the Mastery Series CDs, which is over 12 hours of additional video CD instruction to help enhance and to help you absorb the radioactive trading techniques. So thank you for your order, John, and I, I have a feeling you're going to be very impressed with it. Um, here's, here's a funny thing that Mary mentioned earlier. Um, she says, uh, you know, this business is unfortunately full of crooks. Our government doesn't do things to stop guys like blank that we were sort of discussing earlier. I won't say the name. Uh, everyone should just watch out for themselves. And we agree, Mary. My initial response to Mary at that time was, uh, you know, this is why we're so upfront and forward. Think about how much information we showed about our techniques. You, you kind of have a good idea of what we're doing right now. We start every position with that limited risk trade. We showed you the setup today for free. How we, every position we open, we're going to buy stock and we're going to buy a put option. Now, of course, the specifics are more included in the blueprint, but we're, we're advocating limited risk trading to keep investors out of trouble. Now, the ironic thing about Mary's comment, too, is that about a year ago, um, <laughs> you had the term, Kurt, where we got Google slapped where you had put up a couple of ads on Google, a couple of uh, right. words on Google about being bulletproof, no risk position. I've made this adjustment. Now there's no risk on this trade. It can continue to go up, and we have zero risk on the bottom. And Google said, no, you can't say that. That's incorrect. You can never be no risk in any trade. <laughs> and a week later, Kurt, you ran a search for covered calls trading makes uh, 100% per year. Uh, use spread trading to make thousands percent profits guaranteed over 12 months periods. These comments are allowed. Those were allowed by yes. Google. <laughs> mm -hmm. Saying correctly that you're bulletproof because you had a limited risk position and you made an adjustment where you couldn't lose if the stock collapsed, but you could still make money if the stock moved up in price was disallowed. Uh, Isn't so that, that was, something? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we actually showed how. We showed how, you know, and, and uh, you know, just historically. And it was a real know, trade, yeah. Yeah, and 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 I also disclose that not every trade can be bulletproofed. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. if you if you buy your stock in a put and, and uh, starting then it does nothing but go down, well, you're not going to bulletproof it. Okay, right. but uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was really ironic that that Google uh, wouldn't allow us to say certain things that are true, mm -hmm. but they would allow uh, Mary's so, former guru to and say, other make the claims he does. Other uh, snake oil salesmen promising 100% returns. We made 100. We made 500% return in one week, and we made 600% in two weeks. And it's just misleading. Oh, good lord! <laughs> Jeez. Well, Mike, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it here officially and say uh, uh, we've uh, uh, done everything we can today. Mm -hmm. uh, on Thursday, Thursday, we're going to get into some other uh, spread trades, uh, something completely different than today's presentation. Um, I'm putting up a poll just for my own use to, to uh, ask folks, hey, you know, what, what was most valuable to you today? Uh, out of the things that we talked about, was it, was it uh, limiting risk down to single digits with something way better than the put up, uh, with a, uh, I'm sorry, something way better than a stop order? Was it seeing how the put could be moved to guarantee a payout? You know, did, did that uh, really turn you on? Uh, was it seeing how a spread could take income and still leave the top off. You know, uh, very often we uh, sell a cover call to take income, but we don't leave the top off. Um, did you get that the structure of a trade is more important than the trade itself? Mm -hmm. Or was it just the concept, the idea of bulletproofing? And uh, Mike, I'm going to leave that up there for another few seconds. And I want to thank you for, for coming, Mike. Uh, it's always a pleasure to, to work with men of your professionalism and, and understanding.
Hey, my pleasure, Kurt. You know, I, I owe it to you because uh, I've been trading your techniques in my uh, portfolio for the past four years. You know, I'm always up front during these webinars that at any given time, 50 to 60 percent of my investing capital is invested in the radioactive trading techniques, uh, and maybe 20 to 30 percent in standard collars and so forth. But uh, I've been more successful with radioactive trading techniques over the last four years than I had been the previous six or seven years trading with covered calls, diagonal calendar spreads, and, and credit spreads. That's uh, that's really saying something. Thank you, Mike. Uh, <clears throat> says a lot coming from the director of education over at Powerhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so, cool. Uh, okay, gang. So, thanks so much for your feedback. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close off now, and and uh, I'll share the results. Uh, and, uh, looks like looks like a lot of folks really got that that the structure of a trade is more important than the trade itself. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that's really important, you know. Rather than looking in the wrong places like fundamental analysis and technical analysis, let's look where uh, our emphasis belongs for long-term trading success, and that is limiting risk and proper position sizing. That's right, Mike. Thanks for coming. We'll see you on Thursday, everybody else. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you out there. Happy trading. All right. Good night, everyone. <laughs>